Everyone, remain calm. Yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. And later there's running and screaming. Somebody talk to me, what is happening? Welcome to Jurassic World. You're listening to the Jurassic Park Podcast. You want to consult here or in my bungalow? <laughs> Hold on to your butt. Well, we're back. Hello, and welcome to the 36th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and we're here to discuss all things Jurassic Park. In this episode, we're starting a new segment where I sit down with guests and talk about some of the most recent news, questions within the community, and even a bit of off-the-cuff discussion. This week, Dan Karan joins me in the new segment. Now, we are trying to come up with a name for the segment, sort of how I dive into the visitor center nearly every week with a guest, but this one is a bit more free-flowing, so please, help us come up with a concept or a name for this segment, and we'll definitely give you a shout-out or even a guest spot if you come up with something good. With these episodes, I'm going to skip the news and other segments, so let's just get right into it here with my chat with Dan Karan. Seven o'clock tomorrow night on the East Dock. Make sure he gets it right. But it's alive! And everyone on the planet is going to line up to appreciate it and everything done. People would say they could see the fleas. Oh, I could see the fleas. Mommy, can't you see the fleas? Are, are these characters uh, auto erotic? I don't know. Come on! So this week, I figured we'd do it a little bit differently here and not have such like a serious conversation or, or anything in too much detail. Uh, and we're kind of going to go from from topic to topic, discussing all kinds of different things, different news, different uh, you know discussions that have been going on within the Jurassic Park community, stuff like that. And uh, this week, I actually brought in Dan Caron to kind of go over some of this stuff with me. So uh, how's it going, Dan? Not so bad, Brad. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, there's been a lot of updates recently, nothing too serious, really. So it's kind of just like, uh, you know, some normal low level news here and some cool stuff that people have been talking about in the community and some good questions, really. So uh, I thought we'd just kind of go over some of that about, uh, uh, you know, some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. So nice. <laughs> some of that. So I thought we'd just kind of go over some of that stuff. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, one of the first things it was actually, it's probably, most of the stuff is probably things that I've covered like shortly in the, in the news segment, um, on previous shows or whatever. But, uh, this one, actually, I don't know if I covered this one. This is the Jurassic Park modern trailer. It came out, uh, just recently. It's actually really cool. Uh, hopefully people have gotten a chance to see it. I'm going to play a clip right here while we're, uh, while we're talking here. So. It's really, really the only thing that's different about this is the, the music from the new trailer that came out like last year with Jurassic World. I own an island off the coast of Costa Rica. Now I think it really adds a lot of like impact and uh, a lot of tension and, and later on in the trailer it gives a lot of like horror really with the music and the different sound effects. And keep in mind, this is a trailer for the original Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yeah, so it's playing a lot of the clips from the either, either the original trailer, the, the entire movie there. Um, it's, it's, it's awesome. I highly suggest going to check it out.
I really love this version. It makes it so so much scarier than the uh, original trailer. Well, it does have the Indominus. Uh, <laughs> it has that there. like yeah, it has that like feel to it with the Indominus and everything, and and the sound effects that it was making there. Um, but it's got all the visuals from the first movie. It's just so intense and, and scary. I, I just love it. You don't really... I mean, the first movie is scary, I guess, but... Yeah, but you don't have the fear. Yeah, not like this. Not like this trailer gives off. Yeah. Yeah, it's just awesome. And that music, you know, even though it was is not like... Um, music that you get from the movie except for that last bit there it's still i I really 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 like that music and uh i I mean i'm happy it wasn't in the movie because we got some really amazing music but that's an awesome song there and uh obviously mix it with the uh the the old theme there it's so cool yeah i you know i think the music fit pretty well especially for the way that you know the clips were, were presented because it really did you know give that sense of fear and you know how terrifying this park was with the where the original trailer was more kind of you know it didn't have that same feel that same terrifying no i you know i think nobody really describes jurassic park as terrifying it's always like the the awe and the wonder of of seeing dinosaurs for the first time i feel like that's the way it was presented so it's it's yeah, kind of yeah. cool to see this terror aspect of it i i really liked it um, but, uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's all for that one. That one was really cool. But, um, also there's been a lot of stuff over at, um, uh, what is it? Sundance, the film festival out there. Um, and I think there was, I think Bryce was out there. Uh, Sam Neill was out there. They're both promoting different things here. So, um, Sam Neill actually got to, to chat with, uh, what is it? Uprocks.com. Um, and he talked about his movie that's coming out now um but he also did talk about jurassic world a little bit so that was really awesome to see because um i I feel like i've seen a lot of hate for jurassic world recently and um if you're like if you're a fan of indiana jones um a lot of the the fan community and just just people outside of the fan community even just have this hatred towards the, the the fourth indiana jones the crystal skull movie and I feel like yeah. I feel like Jurassic World is is getting that same reputation in a way, and I I really hate to see that, um, because both of those movies, Crystal Skull and Jurassic World, I feel like are amazing movies. Yes, they have their flaws here and there, but there's nothing to not love about them. You know, but the the problem is that people are stuck in their ways, you know, mm. and 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 you know, it's something that they remember, you know, if if. if, if it's good to, you just, just, it's a nostalgia from the originals is what exactly, it comes down to, but, you know? Yeah, but you have to you have to come at it at a kind of different angle there yeah. and, and it, understand that it's a different movie and it's not going to be the same because it wouldn't be different if it was the same. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I think, think – I think, sorry, the I think the, the biggest problem is the media, really. It's the media is – is tearing down these movies and, you know, calling them garbage. You get all kinds of reviewers that are maybe not meant to review a certain movie. You know, they're kind of supposed to, you know, uh, review like, uh, you know, an Oscar winning movie, you know, something that's Mm -hmm. more serious and, you know, with, with great actors and all this stuff. But you you have to have a different sense of, of mind when you're reviewing a summer blockbuster or, you know, or a kid's movie or something like that. So, I feel like that's part of the problem is they're they're just trashing it in the media. So that's that's one of the problems with both those movies there. But but really I, I was happy to see going back to the actual story here that Sam Neill, who you know as Alan Grant, he um he got out to Sundance and he actually talked about Jurassic World in like a good light. So it's good to see somebody that wasn't in the movie from the previous movies actually talking some some sense into the uh the, the community here. <laughs> Yeah, and I think he has a respect for the franchise and understands that it'll be different as well. Mhm. Yeah. So I, he one of the, you know, people are bringing up, of course, why would he why would he say any differently? And I agree, you know, he's not going to go out there and trash the movie. Um but I I feel like he's a little genuine here, so that's good to see. Yeah. Um of course he did bring up the high heels unfortunately and uh Zara, Zara getting eaten by the uh, Pteranodon there, or not the Pteranodon, but uh, being picked up by the Pteranodon and being thrown into the Mosasaur pool there. So, 
uh, he's bringing up topics that people like to hit on, you know, <laughs> and dig on a lot. But but he still had good things to say about the acting, and he actually said he liked Chris Pratt's bike riding skills. <laughs> <laughs> They were pretty good. They were pretty good. Um, but, you know, a lot of work went into this movie, and I think he respects that. So he's going to say good things, and maybe maybe he'll be in a sequel. We don't know that. So, you know, of course he'd, he'd have to say good things if he's going to continue being in the franchise. <laughs> um, another piece here, actually, that came out in the past few weeks is this um, – the Jurassic Park Orchestra that's that's coming out where you watch the film live and there's actually an orchestra in front of them playing all the, the soundtrack from the, the film. So I am super pumped to see this. Uh, I think it should be coming to New York at some point. I don't know if all the dates or anything have been revealed yet, but it's a good chance it'll be at like Radio City. Um, I think a lot of the previous films have gone there with it, with it being Raiders and uh, Back to the Future, stuff like that. So there's a good chance it'll be at Radio City. So I'm sure we'll meet up there and go see it. I sure hope so. Yeah. Um, I know when we were talking offline, you brought up the, the fact that ticket sales are, are really hard to get for these things. So they usually don't do like – it's not like a typical movie where there's tons of showings and viewings and everything. It's usually just like maybe two, three showings. And uh, you're either out of luck or you got to go see it in a different city. So hopefully we can get some tickets here because I'll be severely disappointed if we can't see this thing. Yeah, this is this is a once in a lifetime kind of thing. So you got to try to get to it when you can. Yeah, I you know, and one of the cooler aspects of it actually is the fact that they're they're actually writing some new. I don't know how much is going to be new, but they're they're consulting with Stephen and uh, John Williams about like music that's kind of going to go into the intermission and out of the intermission, I believe. So hmm. that'll be really awesome if we actually get some sort of new Jurassic Park Content. music, you know, like from the original movie. That'll be so awesome. And, you know, it may just be retooled version of something we already know, but it's still new content that, you know, we can uh, kind of remember there. I don't know if we're going to get it on an album or anything ever, but it's still cool to actually have that music. That that would. I'm sure they'll put it on an album. I don't know. I, I mean. If if not, I'm gonna bring, or I'm, I'm gonna have my iPhone, so maybe I'll just record that part. Oh, yeah, don't say that. <laughs> nah, I don't care. They they can they can you know come get my phone and delete it if they want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm promoting <laughs> bad ideas. Well, I'm not gonna put it out on the internet or anything. I'm just gonna listen to it in my privacy of my own room. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> So you're just stealing for you. That's okay. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what, what am I going to do? I, I already have all the soundtracks. I have all the movies. What am I going to do? I just, yeah. you know, I, what else I'm can I possibly to pay for? I bought both <laughs> soundtracks. I have the original soundtrack, and I have the revamped, like, 20th uh, anniversary soundtrack. So they're not going to, you know, announce another one. <laughs> they might. Yeah, no, I don't think so. But anyway... Uh, moving on to that, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard was actually in the news uh, recently, and uh, she talked slightly about the sequel to Jurassic World. Um, let me play this little clip here. Uh, hopefully it sounds all right. Uh, let me know. Going to a film that's much longer, yeah. Jurassic World. Yeah. Do you, can you tell us anything about sort of what may be next with the Jurassic film? Any, any sneak peeks, any teasers? I... I mean, I can't tell you anything. Okay, fine. I you anything. Fine. I had to try. But you know, I had to try. I understand. <laughs> but here's what I'll say. You have to try. Every single time I bump into <laughs> Colin uh-huh. and Derek, they wrote Jurassic yeah. World. I'm um, Colin directed Jurassic World. I just, <laughs> you know, I like corner them and harass them until they tell me something and everything. They won't even tell you. They, they've told me some stuff. Oh, okay. Just, do I'm you hope so that excited. the white shoes make a comeback? No. Do you want the white shoes to make a comeback? Uh, just no. Personal. No? No. We'll leave them in the past. That was part of Jurassic World. Okay. They serve their purpose. And, leave them um, there. And Claire's a different... Okay. Actually, to be to like answer that question seriously, yeah. um, Claire's a different person now. You know, the person she is at the end of the movie is not the person that she was in the beginning. Yes. And, you know, her kind of... Her armor of sorts was that white pristine outfit with heels and very corporate environment and all that kind of stuff and the chick at the end like totally gone totally out different the so yeah so it, it, it better not be heels it better not be heels <laughs> <laughs> all right so the chick at the end better you know she's mm. she changed and she better not be yeah. wearing any heels but she didn't say anything about the movie really she just kind of gave hints as to what kind of shape claire is going to be in in the sequel 
Um, and yeah, obviously, obviously give, she's changed, you know? Yeah, but that could give some, some context as to, you know, you know how, how, how she'll be in the movie and give you an idea of, of part of the plot, possibly, you know? Oh, absolutely. I think I think we'll see her, you know, kind of torn up about whatever happened on the island. And things are going to be different for her. She's going to be maybe more attached to her family, you know, not so, you know, detached by being away from them on a separate island and, and not even know their ages and stuff like that. So that was a big issue in the first one. And mm-hmm. people, you know, like I said before, the, the media had a huge issue with those heels and with her image and talking about sexism and everything with her character. But like I said before, the media just glosses over the fact that she was a really strong character who did change from the beginning to the end of the movie. And she was the center of that movie. So that's one of the things that that, they just don't focus on. And uh, I think she said it right there. We're going to see her change and be somebody different, essentially a different character. And I wonder if it's a response to the backlash of the character or – um, just the way her character will progress. Do you think that she could be like crazy though after that whole thing? I mean, it's like, good... do you think they could put like a, a weird spin on the character rather than making us think like, oh, she's more caring and more, you know, emotional? I don't um, know. You know, do you think they'd like make her crazy? I can't see it, honestly. I, I think at the end of the movie, she seemed pretty well rounded. And yeah, she was put together. Yeah. And, and she was standing there in the, the hangar thing at the end with all the, the survivors and everything. And Chris Pratt was there and uh, they seemed like well-rounded, both of them. They didn't seem too upset about the, the situation, you know? So, I mean, they, what did they see? They saw, I guess they both saw a few deaths here and there, but um, so it could be shocking. And if you look back into the other movies, I feel like nobody was really that torn up about it, <laughs> to be honest. Like, Malcolm well, Malcolm saw a bunch of stuff in the first movie, and it was he was he was definitely like fatigued in the second movie, but he was still like a decent guy. Like there was nothing wrong with him physically or mentally. Um, yeah. And also uh, Ellie, you know, she we, we saw her again in the third movie, and a lot of terrifying stuff happened to her. You know, she had some dude's severed arm on her shoulder, and was chased true. by raptors, and saw one of the guys that she's you know he. Muldoon said run and she, then he just died right after that so you know she saw some pretty terrible stuff but she had a nice family and a good kid and, and she seemed well rounded too well when when uh, Grant went to Ellie's house you know they you know talked about the, the sounds that they made yeah you know like she she looked terrified when when they actually started talking about the dinosaurs again you know, like she yeah. had a, a totally different look on her face when, guess, when they started yeah. talking dinosaurs. She did get a little um, bit more serious, she, though. Yeah. Yeah. But she was, um, you know, she seemed like she was fine, you know, as well. Yeah. Like mostly. She, she could still. I'm sure she probably still has nightmares and stuff like that. So you're not going to be able to get rid of that, <laughs> you know, PTSD or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be traumatizing no matter what, I'm sure. Uh, Moving on to another topic here. Uh, This one actually came from the internet here. Uh, Actually, now that I think about it, I think it came from Fede, who's part of the Hype Train crew. People were wondering if the Indominus was creating this interference that we heard throughout the movie. And several times in the movie, in Jurassic World, we we saw either like walkie-talkies or cell phones cut out. And it seemed like a convenient plot point where... You know, somebody can't get a hold of somebody and then something bad happens. And, yeah, I guess on the surface you can say, oh, you know, how – what a, what a coincidence that that happened. But yeah. if, if you look into it a little bit more, and we know that, that um, you know, Mizrani and Wu and InGen overall wanted this creature to have all these different traits. And if we look at Dr. Wu as maybe more of a – I don't know if you would say evil or not, but like more of a conniving kind of scientist where he created these traits on purpose. Could he have created some sort of, I don't even know what it would be, but just some sort of interference that messes up with radio signals or, you know, whatever signals he got for phones and walkie talkies. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting concept. Um, and I didn't pick up on it until you mentioned it. Um, you know, earlier, earlier today, but, um, 
it's pretty cool. It, it's um, you know, I, I think there's definitely a way that they could have, you know, included a breed that could have possibly done something like that. You know. Yeah, and it wasn't like you said; it wasn't really specifically stated or anything in the movie, so you don't really know if it's like a real concept or what they were actually going for. But you know, yeah. the, 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 the Indominus avoided IR, and it had camouflage; it had all these certain traits. It was basically bulletproof, so why wouldn't we assume that it created this interference? And I think what uh, the first one we we saw was when. The command center was trying to reach the paddock worker. You know, he had the walkie, I think, on his shoulder or, or somewhere. And they were trying to scream to get out of the paddock because it was still in there with them. So the Indominus is right there. Yeah. So it's it's creating, like, direct interference, if that's the case. Um, another time was when Claire was trying to reach Zach on the cell phone. So the Indominus was obviously in that vicinity. And it attacked them, sh- like, right at that moment basically right after she called so yeah that's a good that's a good one right there and then the th- i think there was only three and it was barry was on the beach or near the beach watching ingen arrive with all their soldiers and everything and he tried to contact owen but he couldn't get him and uh, i'm trying to remember specifically where owen was i think he was just out in the jungle looking for the kids at i think he was actually at where the attack happened on the gyrosphere so, you know, I'm assuming the Indominus was still in that vicinity. And one of the good points for this argument is if InGen was essentially, if this was actually more so not about creating, uh, you know, a better pull for guests to come to this island, but more so about creating a military monster for whatever yeah. their needs are, that would be a number could one. avoid radar. Yeah. Yeah, it is avoiding avoiding everything, and it's sure. it's camouflaging. Yeah. It it avoids IR cutting communications. Yeah, cutting yeah. communications would be like a number one thing that you'd want out in a war zone. So it really makes a lot of sense, and I kind of wish they touched upon it and maybe made it more of a focus instead of it being a convenient plot point. You know? Yeah. But I guess maybe they didn't focus on it because like. I don't I don't know what kind of animal you'd splice with, you know, T-Rex and uh, a frog and, uh, you know, a cuttlefish and all this other stuff to create radio interference. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, mean, no, like, I, I don't know if you uh, if that's even possible. I mean, radio is definitely different from sonar, but like bats have that kind of stuff. And, <laughs> they pull you know, like different a animals do different things. Yeah, like you can put, I guess, a dolphin. Is that... <laughs> Like I don't know if that would too? I don't know well, if it would create know. the opposite like, effect, but it's it's certainly something to think about and you know, I wish they kind of touched upon that more, but eh, we didn't get anything. Yeah. Right. Um mm-hmm. and also, actually I want to move on to this other one here. Uh I don't want to cu- you know, run this too long for everybody listening, but uh I actually reached out to everybody on Twitter, um Twitter handle at Jurassic Park Pod. If you don't follow us, go follow us. And I did uh, one of the new tr- Twitter polls there. You can actually, you know, ask a question and people can vote on it. So I asked, what Jurassic World news are you most looking forward to? And I asked for the, you know, the director to be announced, plot details, casting, or filming locations. I actually should have put on there, uh, somebody cued me in on this. I put a, should have put um, uh, like a title reveal or something like that. But... With 58% plot details won, so I guess a lot of people want to know what's actually happening in this movie. And uh, let's see, 18% was the director, 15% casting, 9% filming locations. So it looked like people are interested in each one of these details, but um, plot details won out. So what what do you think you're most interested in? Oh, man, I don't know. Um Everything. I want to know everything. <laughs> I know. I know. That, that's not an option, though. You can't um, vote on all of them. Uh, um, I think I would have to say the timeline. I, I, I think a timeline um, is, is pretty important to, to know what could be possibly happening in other parts of the, of the plot as well and give us some light on, on, on that to give us some of the possibilities, whether it's the future or the past or how far in the future. I think... Um, I think that's what I want to want to know. 
Yeah, the, I think that when when they reveal the plot details and we find out where they are in the timeline, that'll be that'll be awesome. It'll give us give us some reference as to where the characters may be. Definitely. Yeah. I actually I did vote for the same one, plot details. I voted myself as well <laughs> on my own poll. Um so maybe I skewed the numbers there, but we had a lot of voters anyway. But um plot details is definitely one of the most enticing ones. I mean I definitely want to know with the director. There's been a lot of rumors recently. Um casting could be pretty informative as, as well because sometimes you learn about whatever character they're playing as well. And it would be cool to know if some of the old characters are coming back, but um that's definitely all down on my list a little bit. Filming locations, it would be nice to know that as well. Um, you could probably allude to what maybe could happen plot-wise or, or, you know, it'd just be nice to know where they're going. Um, but, mm-hmm. yeah, somebody brought up um, titles for the new film. So that would be – that would actually be really informative and it would maybe fill us in a little bit about the plot if we knew, you know, what the title was. But I don't, yeah. I don't really know what I could possibly wish the title would be. I, I talked about this a few weeks back with Jen. We were kind of making up um, some some funny, stupid titles. But as far as serious titles are concerned, I really have no idea where we could go uh, with a I, possible title. I really hope they go with, with Jurassic World 2. <laughs> yeah, it, dude, it's it's, <laughs> it's all over the world. It's all over the place because we have Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park three, and then Jurassic yeah. World. So it's there's no cohesiveness at all. I probably talked about this before. I think, but there's no like semblance of what should come next. So it's very strange yeah, that mean, that it went from no number. So it went from Jurassic Park to just a totally different name. And then all of a sudden Jurassic Park three. So it very well could be Jurassic world two. I don't yeah, but think they're going to go back to Jurassic Park not. though. Yeah. I, I hope they don't include another number in there. Cause it's you don't just going to gonna... slashes. I, I don't want to. Well, no, <laughs> I don't want to see two slashes. I don't want to <laughs> see a number. Cause it's just, it, I feel like that just confuses everything, you know, especially with the Jurassic park. Park three, Jurassic yeah, yeah. World two. I, I think it just yeah. kind of confuses it a little bit. But yeah, well, a lot um, of people have been upset that, like, I've seen on Reddit and Twitter and everywhere, people are freaking out. Why are they calling it Jurassic World two? Why is that like the main name that people talk about? Well, first off, because Colin Trevorrow, the director and the producer and writer and all this stuff, he's been calling it Jurassic World two. So. Not really calling it, but he's he's been using the hashtag JW2. So I don't think that's going to be the title, but it at least gives us reference as to I think we're sticking in the in the Jurassic World world. You know, we're not going to go mm-hmm. Jurassic Park 5. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Because <clears throat> we're, we're done. I think we're done with the parks. I think they said it themselves. We're, we're done. There's no chance we're going to be in another park. That would just be stupid on everybody's part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's definitely the, the kind of criticism at this point. You know, you, the same thing. You've yeah. had way too many things the uh, you know happening that just aren't good. So just, you know, stop, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't um, you can't do another park and expect good results. And it's just going to be the same movie over and over again. So I mean, if, I would you know, if they called it Jurassic Park 5, that would kind of be going backwards too much and you don't like Jurassic World 2. Uh, but I just don't want it to be like the Rise of the Planet of the Apes. You know, like there's too many of those in that title. <laughs> you know, and then Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It, again, it's the same thing. I don't want it to be like I, I, another I another I version of the same thing, like, you know? Yeah, I feel like it diminishes the movie, you know, yeah. by, by doing like all these different kind of uh, renditions of the same art you know what i mean yeah um uh but a real title i i don't know what i could envision for um you know a new movie in this franchise i, I it i guess it has to include jurassic in it but um I, I don't know like of another title that i can i can envision for it yeah i mean i guess they could drop world and just do something else but I don't think they'll drop World. I think they'll stick with World. But it'll just be a subtitle, I think. You know, 
I just a lot of people have been saying like Jurassic World, The Lost Park, but mm-hmm. I think that's just too repetitive. Like you said, you know, it's just using rehashing the same thing over and over. And I definitely don't want to see that. Yeah, that's. Hmm. Yeah, I I discussed this with Jen as well because when we were discussing those fake, you know, plot ideas for the next movie, people have been saying Jurassic World, mm-hmm. The Lost Park, but I it just alludes to another park again. And we don't need another park. We, yeah. just, we just need basically the free-roaming world, just dinosaurs everywhere. I imagine that's where it's going to go. So I think it'll just be Jurassic World, some title underneath it. You know, it's just, you know, whatever it is. I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, I just kind of hate those because they, they just kind of – they don't have as much flair, you know? Yeah. They're, they're too uh, long usually too. Like if you look at yeah. Pir- Pirates of the Caribbean has like – Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, Dead Man's Chest, At World's End. So they're just so long, <laughs> you know, Yeah, to put well, all that on it, screen. Yeah, it's different because they all kind of had the same, you know, the same titles, right? If you go from like Transformers to yeah. Transformers 2 to Transformers, whatever the third one was, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> yeah you at least the, the 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 main part of it stays the same you know pirates yeah pirates yeah. of the caribbean transformers but it's it's also like the same thing with fast and furious they've got a big issue as well it's yeah, their titles exactly. are all over the place so yeah exactly i agree it, it's the same thing as jurassic world and, and jurassic park so i don't know i don't know what to expect but that would be an awesome one to get and i don't I don't think that's going to come yet. I think we're going to get director first. Um, we'll probably know some filming locations after that. Maybe some casting and then a bit of plot details and the title right around there. I think I think that's the order it's going to go in. Yeah, that seems logical. Yeah. Get the, it gets a lot of hype out there initially, you know, with, with all those initial details. Yeah. A lot of speculation. Yeah. Well, so I think that about does it for this new segment. Um, We're trying to come up with some sort of name or title for the segment. I want it to be different than the typical discussion segment that we have in the visitor center. So I want it to be something a little bit different. So if you have any ideas as to what this segment could be called, uh, write into us. You can email us at JurassicParkPod at gmail.com or you uh, uh, you can hit us up on Twitter at JurassicParkPod. And uh, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll try to come up with some on our own, and maybe we'll do another Twitter poll out there once we get some answers. Um, so, Dan, thanks for joining me today. Where can people find you online? Oh, man. Um, you can <laughs> it's fi- a tough one because you, you don't find- do anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I am on, on Twitter at Daniel underscore Karan. That's at Daniel underscore Karan. Yeah, we got to get you out there more because you've been really slacking, man. I'm going to call you out right here on Oof. the podcast. You've been slacking. Yeah, I have, I, I'm, you know, I'm a uh, an infrequent tweeter. <laughs> so, I'm going to include uh, you on everything from now on. And everybody that's listening, you better include his Twitter handle that he just said. All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll get involved on the this, uh, title game and we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'll see you later. Bye. I was recently on an episode of Jurassic Unicast with James and Steve, where we talked all about Star Wars and, of course, a little bit of Jurassic Park. Hello, and welcome back to Jurassic Unicast. I'm joined here with James Hawkins. Good, good. We've got a special guest back, uh, Brad Jost from Jurassic Park Podcast. So, the film is finally out. How long did it take you to see it from when it first arrived? Uh, I had to see it the first showing. When the music came on, I was like, ah! Like, I just got that <laughs> excitement again. So, um, I take it you really liked it then to go and see it three times? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was hoping I was going to really like it because I already had all the tickets purchased. I just thought, you know what, Jurassic World got a lot of stick. Everyone was saying these raptors are not quite right. And I'm thinking, the raptors, to me, the raptors looked better. And one of the things uh, I didn't like was how quickly Ray became 
one with the force. But I'm I'm just intrigued to see what Trevorrow is going to do in the night with the last one. <laughs> yeah, me too. The, the guy seems to know. He knows what nostalgia is, and he knows what fans want. Make sure to find Jurassic Unicast on YouTube to listen, and follow them on Twitter at JP underscore Till underscore I underscore Die. I had the chance to sit down with Sabrina and Garrett from I Know Dino, the big dinosaur podcast, for episode 60 of their podcast. We talked all about dinosaurs in the media from 2015. Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino, the big dinosaur podcast, where we cover news, interviews, and discussions of all things dinosaur. Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino. I'm Garrett. And I'm Sabrina. We have an interview with Brad Jost from the Jurassic Park podcast. Yeah, you can especially tell when everyone tries to work Jurassic into the name of their thing. <laughs> Why are you using Jurassic rather than Cretaceous or Triassic? But I think one of the, the entire mess ups that they had with Jurassic World was, you know, not projecting how big it was going to be, even for their theme parks. Yeah, the, we had um, one of those guys in a dinosaur suit at our wedding, too, actually. <laughs> A, well, oh, really? It was supposed to be a juvenile T-Rex, I think, so it was a little bit bigger than... His name was Duncan, and they put a lot of time and effort into building this animatronic head for him. And I think, yeah. actually, I like Jurassic World a little bit better than I like the good dinosaur. Make sure to listen via iTunes, check out their website, inodino.com, and follow them on Twitter, at inodino. Thanks for listening to the 36th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. Again, I just have to thank Dan Curran for joining me in this new segment this week. I think this formula will be a good way for an overall chat on all things going on within the Jurassic Park community. Now, if you have a concept or a name for this segment, send it in and we'll make sure to give you a spotlight. Oh, and don't forget, I have a few videos from my time at Islands of Adventure this past December that I've posted over on our YouTube page. So make sure to watch them both. The first one is a ride through of the Jurassic Park River Adventure. And the second is the Raptor Encounter from Islands of Adventure. Please go watch them and give them a big thumbs up and share them with all your friends. For next week's episode, I've got a few emails and voicemails to go over with all of you. So if you have anything that you want read or played on the episode, make sure to reach out and we'll include it. It's going to be a listener-filled episode, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. If you want to interact with us, we do most of our work over on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Pod. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Jurassic Park Podcast, and our Instagram handle is at Jurassic Park Podcast. You can listen to us via iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podomatic, and YouTube, or wherever else podcasts are found. So make sure to subscribe. If you haven't already, please give us a five-star review on iTunes or the best possible review you can give us wherever else you listen. It will seriously help our rankings and make it easier for fans like you to find us. We're usually spotted commenting on the Jurassic Park subreddit as Jurassic Park Podcast. Now, if you want to get a hold of us, you can email us with any news stories, MP3s, segment ideas, pictures, top tens, or comments to Jurassic Park Pod at gmail.com. If you'd like to record something for the show, send it in to us and we'll feature it in an upcoming episode. Now, if you don't have any way to record, you can give our voicemail a call and leave us a message. That number is 732-825-7763. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now. This week, Sam Neill sits in one of the Jonas Brothers' seats. It was unacceptable, and he was asked to leave right away. He decided, <laughs> you know what, I'm not going to make a big deal out of this, and did an interview despite being yelled at by the manager. In other news, Winston's has a few customers. They're just eating. No big deal. Over to you, Johnny. <laughs> Hey, well, we got orchestra music coming to you live over the Jurassic Park movie. It's going to be great. We hope to see it in New York or else that would be horrible. Just absolutely horrible. (laughs) Over to you, (laughs) Phil. (laughs) Thanks, man. 78 degrees.
Peace. What? You're on East Nublar. <laughs>